Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today for our Explore the Kinematics of a Cart on a Ramp webinar. So we have Tom Smith as your main presenter. He has nine years of teaching experience in high school physics and engineering classrooms, and he has been with Vernier for seven years. And we also have Dave Vernier, our co-president and co-founder. Um, he has 12 years of teaching experience with high school physics and physical science, and this is our 40th anniversary of Vernier, so he has 40 years at Vernier. So I will pass it on to Tom and Dave. Okay. Thanks, Angie. And uh, thank you all for uh, joining us with this webinar, taking some time out of your summer to, uh, to even begin to think about next year is uh, my hat's off to you. Uh, so thanks for, thanks for being here. And thanks, uh, Dave, for being both my student and my uh, lab assistant yes. in this uh, webinar. That's great. Um, so we're going to uh, go through a lab called Cart on a Ramp. Uh, it's lab three in our physics with Vernier book. And uh, it when I was teaching in a physics classroom, this was typically maybe the third day of class or something like that. The first day I would spend just getting to know my students. The next day we might be getting used to some of the technology and equipment that I had in my classroom, maybe do a graph matching activity. And then we would uh, start to explore uh, kinematics and specifically uh, the constant acceleration model. Um, that's how I started my uh, my classes. Uh, every every physics teacher I know uh, does things just a little bit differently. So uh, uh, you can see where your your particular approach. Uh, we're going to use graphical analysis as our data collection tool, and we're going to use a couple of the pro uh, that are featured. So the first one is going to be uh, data sharing. So uh, with, with Graphical Analysis Pro data sharing, you're able to stream data to your students uh, real time. And so uh, if you're doing a demonstration in front of your classroom, you can stream that data to your students on their own devices, whether it's a computer, a Chromebook, or their smartphones. Um, uh, and also gives you an opportunity, heaven forbid we get back into a pandemic situation where you're teaching remotely, you can uh, be showing video of yourself collecting uh, data in your classroom while your students are getting that data on their devices as long as they have an internet uh, uh, connection. The other tool that we're gonna show at the end of the webinar is uh, some of the embedded experiment files that have both uh, data that we have collected in the lab as well as uh, synchronized video with that. And I'll show you some of the, the benefits of that particular situation. But if you have a graphical analysis uh, installed on your computer now, uh, we can use this code to uh, go ahead and uh, uh, activate the pro versions. Um, let me uh, back up just one second, and I'm going to show you how you can download graphical analysis, the free version, if you don't already have that. So here I am on uh, vernier.com, just at the homepage. And then if you go to the downloads tab here, you can click on that. So again, this is graphical analysis. There are uh, versions for Mac and Windows computers. You can download those directly from the website there, or there are links to the appropriate web stores if you have a uh, uh, an iOS device or an Android phone or a uh, Chrome uh, Chromebook, you can access those there. And the download should happen pretty quick. And then we can activate the, uh, the pro version here uh, while we're talking. So I'll get that out of the way. Um, okay, so if you have graphical analysis open, you can, Angie, if you haven't done it already, would you capture that code and put it in the chat? It sounds like that's been done. And uh, let me go to uh, the next screen and kind of show you how this might work. 
So let's see, get that up there. So I am, this is the, this is my student Dave's, uh, 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 device there. And then here is my version of graphical analysis. Now, in uh, I'm going to just set up a sensor data collection uh, system uh, session. And uh, Dave, if I could get you to turn on the, uh, the sensor cart that we're going to use for this experiment, then I'll have a device to to connect to. So there's the sensor card. I'll just click on that, uh, connect to it. And then uh, sensor channels. I'll just show this to you. We're going to stay on position because that's what we're interested in. Uh, cart on a ramp. We'll just look at the position, velocity, and acceleration uh, graphs associated with that. Um, there are other channels available, but we're just going to stick with position and I can hit done. And I'll note that, uh, close that out. And you'll see that uh, by default, we just get position and velocity versus time graphs. Uh, we're probably gonna find it's most useful to throw a third graph up there. So I'm gonna come up here to uh, this little uh, view options icon. And instead of two graphs, I'm going to select three graphs. And there we get position, velocity, and acceleration. All this is getting a little bit scrunched together because I'm splitting my screen with Dave. But uh, you can hopefully see that on your own devices or look closely at your computer screens as you're watching this. Um, so that's these just automatically uh, generate like this. And in order to, uh, we're going to start a data sh sharing session now so that Dave can get the data that I'm going to collect as I'm collecting it. So I'm going to click here, uh, start a data sharing session. And you'll see this code SFM0NR. I can make that a little bigger, kind of handy. And once again, Angie, if you would grab that and put it in the chat, that'd be great. Now, Dave is starting a new experiment and he's choosing data sharing. Can you go back and can you uh, go back and show that again real quick, Dave, so you can uh, show people where to connect. Uh, so he's clicking on untitled, clicking new experiment, and then data sharing is the option he chose. And then he's gonna specify this code for local data sharing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> huh. Let me bring that up again for you. I'm a slow typer. SFM zero NR. Now, if you're doing this at home, you should be able to use the same code. SFM. Zero N R. Maybe I my S M. I might have done it. Oh. Yeah, it's always, I believe, in this format, three letters followed by a number followed by two letters. That way, I think. Huh. Let me try something. Perhaps I'm not on the network. Or something. So I'm just on the guest network, but that you should be able to. Oh, I see. Just not on the. I'm just seeing if I am on that network. Goodbye. Hmm. Hmm. 
Gary or Gus? Okay. So Tom, yeah. Uh, while Dave's connecting, we do have a couple of questions that maybe you can go over. Sure. Um, one is: Is the data sharing only on the pro version of GA uh, or graphical analysis? Um, yes. So let me just jump in and answer that. So the that is one of the key features of the graphical analysis pro version. And the pro version is a subscription service. There's an annual fee for a school to uh, to sign up for that. Um, and that's uh, uh, that. And there's uh, there's a couple of other key features, one of which we're going to see at the end of the webinar. And then uh, continuing to build additional resources into the pro version as well. Other questions there? So Sylvia wants to know, do students at home, uh, do they just type it into their URL address bar? So they would open up graphical analysis. So they'd have to download graphical analysis onto their device. And then once you've started your data sharing, uh, 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 session, they would, uh, just like Dave was trying to do, go to new experiment and then uh, type in or uh, go to data sharing and type in that code. Are we still having trouble I'm with that? This other, I can't connect with that device for some strange reason. Okay. So let me try this. And then uh, just one more question, Tom. Sure. Um, so there was a little confusion on the graphical analysis pro temporary code versus the data sharing code and when right. you put each of those in you can explain that a little bit more yeah so the the temporary code is just to give us access for this webinar for a couple of weeks and that happens when you first launch graphical analysis so if you uh have graphical analysis uh installed on your computer and you go to uh, launch graphical analysis, it'll have a place for you to uh, show, to enter that uh, code. Oh, Dave, if you go back to the very beginning yes. of that and hit untitled yes. and new experiment, notice that we haven't authorized GA Pro here. So let's go. Um, let me see if I can find the chat and find the code for Ooh. the license. So if, uh, let's see. So it's uh, capital U, capital M, capital M, capital H, lowercase p, lowercase i. What was that second last letter, last letter? Uh, so let's see, you have that you should be capital, capital. Can you see that? So U, the, U, F, F, capital H. Actually, no. It's just, so it's, if you go just wipe that out and we'll start over. Okay. Capital U, capital, oops, capital U. There we go. Capital M, capital M, capital H. There we go. And small case P I S capital D capital G. That would explain okay, why we were that. having trouble with that. Yeah, great. So everybody learned something there. And now that code <laughs> that we're looking for is this code right here. So hopefully this uh, helped answer that last question about which code to use when. Once you have a purchased a version of Graphical Analysis Pro, you shouldn't have to worry about that code ever again. It would just be a matter of the data sharing code uh, when you're data sharing with your class. I think that was a very instructive uh, segue for uh, <laughs> okay, so here we go. Uh, again, cart on a ramp. Um, I'm going to show a, a, a video camera here briefly to show you what our experimental setup looks like.
and we have a cart on our ramp. Simple enough. This happens to be a sensor cart, and that sensor cart it has uh, the motion encoder built into it. Basically, you could do this experiment with other uh, hardware. So I could use a motion detector. Thanks, Dave and just put it on the end of the track like that to capture the motion. Uh, but we wanted to use the sensor cart, it just gives really clean data, a uh, very uh, effective way of collecting data for this lab. Uh, do you wanna, Dave, you wanna roll it up the cart, uh, up the ramp just to show us? So typically you're gonna roll it up and then catch it before it hits the backstop there for the first part. And the lab starts with, uh, uh, let me bring these back up here quickly. Um, having the students make a prediction as to what that graph is gonna look like for the position versus time graph, for the velocity versus time graph, and for the acceleration versus time graph. So Dave's gonna go ahead and do that. I'll point out as he's doing it that for the position versus time graph, he's gonna click on this graph tools button and you'll notice when he does that, that the entire screen opens up to look at uh, just that position versus time graph. And we'll look at position. And, oh, sorry, I did something backwards there. Want me to draw my prediction, huh? Yeah, I want you to draw Gee, your prediction. I gotta prediction. think about this. It's getting farther away. And then it's coming back, I think. Okay, so Dave is being a model student for us, so uh, don't judge him too harshly. Um, but that would be, at this point, if he talks to his lab partners and they decide that's what that uh, prediction is gonna look like, he can just hit the save button. And that becomes uh, basically an image on his uh, prediction screen. Um, now, if you would pull up your uh, velocity versus time graph at this point, we can create a, oh, interesting. I'm gonna go back myself and pick three graphs so that I can see all three of these at the same time. seem to have some challenging challenges clicking for some reason, there we go. Okay, so we're gonna do that for a velocity versus time graph and for an acceleration versus time graph, making predictions for each one of these. Um, the- You want me to do a draw, draw, draw my uh, velocity prediction? Yeah, why don't we go ahead and, and do a prediction for, the, oh, for boy, velocity? Oh going to, see it's starting uh, slow. This, oh, wait, it's starting slow. But it's, I guess it's going to slow down again. I guess it's almost like that. No. Okay, so if that's your prediction, you can hit the save button. Now, we have two predictions here. It might be worthwhile uh, uh, naming them separately. So you could say prediction velocity or prediction. So let's go to, uh, I think if you click on the, on the axis, you should be able to click on your uh, uh, prediction here, rename and rename it. your prediction. Okay. And you can imagine doing the same thing for acceleration, just to kind of keep the ball moving here. Uh, why don't we uh, pull up your prediction for uh, position on the top graph and for velocity on the next graph. And uh, I think our viewers get the, the idea of that. And we'll go ahead and collect some data. The lab has us uh, let the, the cart sit for about a minute excuse me, a second, 
and then launch it up the, the uh, ramp and then catch it on the way back down. So we'll get a set of data here. And uh, I'll go ahead and collect and you can start when you're ready, Dave. And you can see the data coming in on the velocity position and acceleration graphs. And uh, they should stream in on Dave's graph as well. Oh, so I didn't do very data. well. So this is a great opportunity for the students, either individually or as lab groups, to get together and consider what was different about their prediction, uh, what they did right, what they need to revise their, uh, their uh, preconception about what the graph is going to look like. You can also challenge the students to become uh, more sophisticated in their predictions. You can say, okay, how far up the ramp is it actually gonna go? So instead of drawing to 1.4 meters, when your ramp is actually only 1.2 <laughs> meters long, that might be Are a clue. Are you saying that, that wasn't it, very smart of me? Huh? <laughs> I would never say that, Dave. <laughs> but those types of, uh, of discussions, I think are very helpful before we actually get into uh, collecting the data and and then doing some analysis. At this point, the, the lab would have students, this is part one of the lab, and the instructions would say, go to the analysis part of part one. Now, part of that is to uh, mark on the graph particular elements, like where the graph is, uh, and maybe I'll just blow up my screen here a little bit so I can uh, demonstrate this a little bit closer. So mark on the graph the highest point of the of motion. And uh, so we can kind of pinpoint that here and note that it coincides with a velocity of zero. Huh. So that the cart actually stops at the very top. And then looking at our acceleration at that same point, um, we can we can note that Wow, that acceleration is really pretty constant the entire time the cart is in free motion. Um, so there's a, a lot to kind of unpack here with the analysis questions. They also ask you to consider the portion of the graph that uh, is where it is going up the ramp and mark the portion of the graph where that's going down the ramp and look at each of these sections of the other corresponding uh, graphs. And then finally, it introduces the constant acceleration model and explains uh, just in really kind of factual uh, 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 terms, the idea of, uh, so creating a curve fit. So let me, uh, let me change my view here ever so briefly, just go to one graph. I'm gonna do a curve fit for the um, position versus time graph. So add a curve fit and the instructions tell students to use a quadratic and to apply that. And then they can, they get this form for their equation they can note these parameters that create that equation and uh, match that up with the uh, x is equal to one half times the acceleration squared plus the initial velocity times the time plus uh, a constant c. So they can go through that constant acceleration model. Uh, and they would do basically the same thing for each of these three using the slope of the velocity graph for acceleration for the velocity, and then the average value of the acceleration during this portion here. And they would use the statistics to get to that average acceleration. Now, note that I've done a lot of analysis here on my uh, particular graph. I'm gonna uh, come back here, and if you look at Dave's a screen, he doesn't have any of that analysis data that I have done. So he's really forced to do the experiment uh, himself. Uh, the data sharing does not provide curve fitting to transfer, it just transfers the data, which is a real nice 
a benefit to encourage everybody to engage with the experiment. Hey, Tom. Yes. A question that I think is relevant for right now. Uh, Mary wants to know, how do you save the graph or experiment and then pull them back up? Where do you save them on your computer? Oh, okay. Well, uh, personally, I like to save my, uh, my graphical analysis files on a, a Google Drive. So I just come here and I can say, save as, and it's gonna give me an option of where to save it. I can, uh, I'll just save it to my desktop for this uh, particular example. Um, I just have to select my desktop and then I'll just say it's uh, test one and I can save that. Now, if I want to find this again, I can come here to new experiment and instead of, uh, I can choose a file instead of, uh, of that. I can go to my desktop, I find test one and I can reopen that. And there, it's kind of odd to open a file that I just opened but, or just saved, but there it is. That's how you would do that. Um, you can also, if you save it to a, a Google Drive, you can also share that with uh, classmates or with uh, your teacher, depending on how you hand things in. Um, uh, so I, I do recognize, and we just have a few minutes left, I want to show briefly the uh, ability to use the embedded uh, experiment file. So I'm going to show my entire screen again. And I'm going to uh, start a new experiment. I won't save this this time. And when I start a new experiment, I have this sample experiments. I can see my experiments. I know that we're doing a physics uh, experiment. So I can either go by subject or I can go by lab book. This happens to be in physics with Vernier. So I'll use that filter. And we're looking at cart on a ramp. So I'm going to open up this particular experiment. Now you'll notice these uh, files are going to look very similar. We have this parabolic shape here for position versus time and the straight line for velocity versus time. But we also have this video embedded uh, with, the, with the data. So I can just play that video so it shows what the experiment looks like. Um, but even better yet, let me uh, minimize this a little bit. Um, I can use this replay button. So enable replay. And uh, if we go to, it brings up these uh, tools right here. I can hit the play button and you'll see that we have data coming in. We have a video that's synchronized with that data. Um, which is really kind of handy, especially if you have a student that's absent, uh, maybe they're making up work remotely or uh, one of those uh, uh, situations. But there's also some nice features that uh, you can slow this down. So if I slow it down to basically a third speed here, I can really zoom in on what's going on with the experiment. So we Again, slowly going up here. I can pause the video at the top and really realize that, okay, my velocity is really zero right here. And I can move the video backwards and forwards um, off of that as well. So to be able to slow the video down in physics is a really nice thing. In biology, you might want to speed it up because you don't want to watch plants grow really slowly. So, uh, and that, uh, that shows some of the features of this particular application. Hey Tom, while you're on this screen, um, we had a question about, could you add the acceleration graph to this one as well? Yeah, so let me, uh, let me just go again to this view icon and I can choose three graphs. And acceleration is going to show up by default. If I wanted a different uh, uh, parameter showing up on my y-axis, I can just click here and I could choose uh, velocity 
uh, position any of the three or all three if I wanted to. Uh, we'll leave it with acceleration for now. And then we had a question, is the video experiment portion only available in the pro version? Yes, again, this is one of the, of the pro version features. Uh, the other kind of major pro version feature that you'll find is your ability to take video of experiments yourself, embed them with your, so if I come up here, you'll notice that there's a, a video option. You can embed a video of your own making and uh, synchronize it with the data that you've collected using sensors. Um, so those are probably the three main features of graphical analysis pro, although there are others. And yeah, I think you just answered this other question is how do you sync the video to the data? I'm answering you. Okay, it sounds like Dave's trying to get to that in chat. Um, there is, a, a, without uh, having a video at hand to kind of show how that works. Um, let me see if, in these experiment files, there's actually this button here. You can change the times depending on the time of the video versus the time of the data and match those up. In fact, you may you may want to see if uh, this is really the best uh, synchronization. You may adjust that slightly and see how that works. Angie, how are we doing for uh, for time and questions? Uh, we are at time, just a few minutes over. Um, and I will say that we have uh, Julia, I'll follow up with your question after the session uh, today. I just need to do a little research on um, looking at what you've purchased before. Um, but I think that all of the questions other than that one have been answered. Okay, well, I just want to thank you once again for uh, tuning in to the webinar and uh, enjoy your summer and good luck as you start uh, school in the fall. Uh, again, appreciate your attention this morning.